We talked with one of the most experienced recreational fishermen on the coast, Jim Welter. We asked him why the public should believe what he says about the ocean. Because I've seen it. And my whole process in life is, is when I, I try to understand how God created it to function, I don't try to figure out what I can do to improve it or anything else. You first have to understand why and how it was created to function. If you don't have that concept, you're just guessing at it. You're just like throwing rocks at a puddle and wondering what you're going to hit. All the years I've fished, you got different times you fish for different species. And where they're going to be feeding in the ocean, I, I tell you, if there's no food out there, the fish know where to go to find it when it is there. But we do know when we look out here and we see the kelp is breaking loose in the late part of the summer and it's breaking off and floating, it disappears. The habitat is gone. A good Pacific storm is just like a, a blender. I mean, it grinds it all up and it's gone. And, and to go out and try to understand that, you, 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 those fish know ahead of time when to move offshore and when to come back. And the El Nino come, and all of a sudden we had no rockfish, they're gone. And oh, it's a disaster. No. And then when the cool water come back down from Alaska, all of a sudden here these fish showed up that's eight and nine years old. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's either more fish or they completely changed their plans, which, you know, fish don't do that much. They got places they like, places they don't like. And that's the trouble, these, these rascals got tails and they don't always conform to our, our little models. computer models. Probably the last maybe five or six years, I've seen situations where the life is so abundant, it's, it's, it's like the Discovery Channel, you know, off your bow. Um, just so much feed, so much life, so many species um, for, over such broad areas that it's it's hard hard to see how how it can get much better really you know in comparison to what I've seen over the years. Fishermen are concerned how the public gets information about the fisheries and the ocean off Oregon. They've been told in school that the whole ocean is in crisis and uh, you just wonder how old their information is in the schools if they'd at, got the information from Fish and Wildlife in the last few years on what's really in Oregon's waters. Those kids would have a, a totally different outlook on what's going on with the fish. One of the things I do is I take the marine biology course out to Whale Watch. And in that, over the years of working with the marine biology class, I've developed a relationship with the marine biology teacher who is excellent. Uh, our conversation last year was, um, I would tell her I, she, uh, that the ocean is alive. I said, I just don't understand it, Beth. The ocean is alive and everybody, you hear about the dead zones. You hear about the, you know, the ocean is in crisis, you know. But I said, from my window of my office, 130 days a year, going out in the ocean, looking down at the bottom, I just kept telling her, it's alive. It was so great when I received a call from her after the fishing season. She says, yeah, Joe, Captain Joe, the scientist caught up with you. I just read an article in the Oregonian that says, this last year, the ocean was alive. When we first started fishing, I first started fishing maybe 30 years ago, we were basically harvesters and uh, overfishing wasn't a concern. We hadn't really seen it in this area. Sustainability was not really a word that we, many of us had even heard of. We became, I think in many of our minds, stewards of the resource ourselves because we realized that if it was going to, to last for any length of time, we had to take a proactive, attitude towards making sure that um, techniques we used were not going to overuse of the resources. When they say something, we take it to heart and take care of it, you know. We don't overfish it. I'm confident that my grandkids and great-grandkids, grand, great-grandson I got, can, can run a boat if he wants to. Before regulation, 
be, you know, before regulations makes you do a particular thing. I have always felt like I have practiced and was taught to be a good steward of the ocean resource. 